So the big question is this, should you ask for what you want? Today, I share another revelation on asking for what you want in a relationship. My name is Jonah Wosu and welcome to the Second Chances podcast, a love journey in black and white. So today, today's episode is all about communication, specifically the importance of telling your partner what you want, because believe it or not, newsflash, men are not mind readers. See, this is a very common scenario in many relationships where one partner is silently stewing over unmet needs or desires, while the other is blissfully unaware of their partner's discontent, which only leads to resentment. So this is an issue. It's an issue because having a lack of communication, of open communication about what you want from your partner only leads to you being unhappy. So we need to take care of that today. So like I was saying, this is another insight that I got from my recent trip to Cuba, where I was speaking to a lady who has been married for 30 years. And she said in all of the years and all all the while she's spoken to a lot of uh, marriages, dysfunctional marriages, or people just having um, issues in their relationships, one thing she has understood is that there's a lot of resentment, there's a lot of unhappiness, a lot of dissatisfaction because people don't know how to ask for what they want and not just asking, but also asking the right way because there's different ways to ask. So the truth is expecting your partner to just magically decipher what you want, what you need without you explicitly saying it is not only unfair, but it's really unrealistic. Think about it. It doesn't matter how close you are. It doesn't matter how much time you spend together. It doesn't matter how much you think they should understand you or how much you understand them. It is impossible for you to know every single thing that's going through a person's thoughts and minds and feelings and just knowing magically what it is that they desire at that point in time just doesn't happen. So we all need some level of guidance so that you can now give that which you're being asked for not given after being asked is a totally different ballgame. We're not talking about that today. But the question I have for you is why do people shy away from telling their partners what they want? Well, I used to be one of those people. And the truth is, part of it is about this fear of being vulnerable. Like most of us are just based on past trauma and experiences, find it really difficult to be, to be vulnerable or you also don't want to come across as somebody who's who's needy, who's not independent, who doesn't have their stuff together. Or you have this delusional belief, this fairy tale romance where you're thinking, well, but if he truly loves me, he will just know um, how. <laughs> this mindset can only lead to resentment. It can only lead to misunderstanding, to dissatisfaction, and just a lot of missed opportunities where you could be building a deeper connection. Instead, you're just there stewing away because you're expecting this mind reader to know what it is that you're looking for. It just doesn't work. So what's the solution? Well, the solution, as with most things in relationship, has to do with open, honest communication. Right, It's about creating a safe space where both of you, it's not one way now, where both of you can feel comfortable enough to express your desires, express your fears, express your expectations, because you do want the relationship to be fulfilling for both parties. So you need a safe space to be able to speak openly and truthfully about what it is that you you need right? And be clear about it. There's no need for cryptic clues. No, just say what you want, but say it in the right way, right? So it's not about making demands. No, it's about being constructive, being being respectful. No ultimatums. It's not like, well, if you don't do this, then no threats. No, not that. It's about communicating in a respectful and loving way so that your partner can can take that away and come back and, and give you that which you desire. So what does this look like? Let me give you a practical uh, tip. So if you're not used to asking, like many people are not used to asking, because again, just past experiences of trauma, start with something small. So if there's something that you, you'll be wanting your partner to do, for example, like planning a date, I know that I get that a lot where um, a lady will say to me, well, he doesn't plan dates, he doesn't plan anything, he's just there, I have to do all the planning. Or another thing I hear a lot is he doesn't help a lot around the house, he doesn't do stuff, I do all the cooking, all the cleaning, and he never asks to help, and all of that stuff, right? 
you want to be able to express that desire clearly, but also lovingly. So rather than say, you never helped me with this, you might try saying something like, I feel really appreciated when you plan our date nights. Could we do that more often? Oh, I feel really, really, um, really, really appreciated or loved when you help with do the dishes or when you take out the trash. I really love that. And I just want to appreciate you for doing that and would love if you could do more of that. Right. So you say it in a kind way where you, you acknowledge that he's done some good in the past or there's some other areas in your relationship where he does a great job and how you would like for him to do more of that. And that way he would feel appreciated and want to do more of that because now he knows that, oh, that really makes her happy. And you have to remember every man who loves you, one of his greatest desires is to make you happy. So if he sees that this actually does make you happy, why wouldn't he want to do more of that? But if you just sit there fuming with inside of you and thinking, oh, here we go again, another Friday now, here we go again, dishes in the sink and he's not offering to help, you're not helping anybody. So be open, learn how to be direct yet loving in the way you approach and you communicate your desires. Communication is a two-way street. So I know I'm talking about asking for men, but as you're asking from him, you have to also be meeting his needs. So make sure that you also create a space for him to be able to share his own desires and be prepared to listen and act on them as well. Because if he's also telling you his desires and you don't do it, then you can't turn around and expect him to do yours. So it has to be this mutual exchange of where both of you are able to speak your desires openly in a kind way and both of you are working towards making the other person happy or um, helping them out with whatever uh, things they, they desire. That way you're, you're creating a beautiful, deeper, more loving relationship and that really does strengthen the bond. So that was another lesson that I picked up. So I just want to encourage you, be more open. Where, where we keep thinking, oh, this is this magical to become one, therefore I can read your mind. Nobody can read anybody's mind. There's no more can a woman read a man's mind than can a man read a woman's mind. Nobody can read anybody's minds. So it's about being open, being able to communicate in a loving way and being open to also receiving uh, feedback and expectations from your partner and being able to act on those as well so that you can have a more fulfilling, um, harmonious relationship where both of your needs are being met and satisfied, right? Love thrives in transparency and it withers in silence. Never forget that. So it's not about being quiet. It's about speaking your truth and being open, obviously, in a safe space so create that space in your relationship and go on and speak your truth and speak what you want you will have your desires met so that was another lesson that i picked up and and i've been practicing more of that i i, I usually act but i'm also practicing more of that because maybe sometimes i forget and i just have these expectations in my mind and then i'm rolling my eyes and thinking how could he have missed that but now i just ask could you help me with this or i love it when you do this for me and you know david is always willing to jump and do everything because he wants me to be happy right? So it really does work. And I really wanted to just share that with you and encourage you to start asking. If you haven't been asking, start practicing, practice with small things, and then you can keep growing to start asking for bigger things. My goal is for everybody to have a fulfilling relationship where your needs are being met and you can have a beautiful, beautiful, loving relationship. So let me know. Let me know if you are one of those people who really struggles in asking, who you're so independent or you've been doing, you're so used to doing stuff on your own, that it's very difficult. And if you need some help or some tips on asking for what it is that you want. I'm always here. So reach out to me and let's have a conversation. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like and share and also comment. I love to hear from all of you and I want to know how your, your dating is going or if you're now in a relationship, so also share that with me. I want your success in love as well. Thank you for joining me today on today's episode on Second Chances Podcast, A Love Journey in Black and White. Remember, no matter what, never give up on love. Till next time, sending you love and light.